okay uh, in this session what i want to talk about is vapor density vapor density is a very simple concept to actually understand but uh, um, that's one of the problem with students is that they don't actually have an idea of what vapor density actually means uh, that i think from the reason for that is uh, that in most books it is not explained um, uh, with I, with the idea that you know you need to kind of explain it to students who don't understand a lot of the chemistry all right uh, in most books vapor density is just given as a like a paragraph and and, and then it did there is a direct formula about it all right and the students have no idea where this formula actually comes from so uh, what I'll try to explain here is uh, how you know what what is the actual meaning of vapor density is how do we use it and then uh, how do we actually get the formula for vapor density the way we uh, the way we use it all right so uh, vapor density uh, usually is just represented by vd so that's what we're gonna use okay i'll start with the uh, you know definition of vapor density vapor density of any gas all right is equal to density of any gas over density of hydrogen gas so it's basically if you look at it uh, it's a ratio of densities all right um, so you take a density of whatever gas you are trying to measure and uh, then you take the density of hydrogen gas you take a ratio of that and what you get is a density of this gas all right so let's say for example you took uh, oxygen as a gas all right and that the density of that oxygen gas is going to go into the numerator density of hydrogen gas is going to go into the denominator and uh, um, and that's about it and so this this term is actually constant all right so we know the density of hydrogen gas and uh, gas or we can just calculate that very easily um, and then we get the vapor density all right and then we can use this formula of vapor density to calculate the molecular masses of any gas okay so molecular mass of gas and this is only for gases remember that it doesn't work for liquids or solids um, so molecular mass is basically in this case is uh, vapor density of that gas times 2 all right so we'll see how that actually goes along in this particular case now how do you calculate the density of any gas and it's really easy to actually do that right uh, we know density is mass by volume so what i can do is uh, calculate the mass and volume of that gas and that will give us the density all right we can do do this for any gas and and for hydrogen gas all right so for convenience actually we can take volume as 22.4 right 22.4 liter so let's say uh, the v1 which is the volume of any gas is uh, 22.4 liters and the mass of that gas m1 is nothing but its molecular mass molecular weight okay same thing for hydrogen if we take v of v2 uh, the, that's for hydrogen and we take the volume as 22.4 liter all right and m1 uh, sorry in this case m2 that is going to be molecular weight of hydrogen which is 2 all right and if you plug this into this formula all these values okay these will be go here and these will go over here so what we get is is if you plug these values in there vapor density is mass is basically your molecular weight okay divided by 22.4 over uh 2 divided by 22.4 all right so the volume is same so it get, gets cancelled up and now vapor density is equal to molecular weight divided by 2 what that means is that molecular weight is equal to vapor density times 2 okay times 2 so that's our formula um, essentially it's it's surprising to actually think about the fact that um, you know vapor density times 2 you get the molecular mass of the gas 
it shouldn't be surprising because it comes from this formula directly all right now let's let's uh, discuss this formula vapor density mm, so let's say density of gas one over density of hydrogen all right so that's what we call as a vapor density if you take let's say for example uh, any other gas let's take oxygen all right as a as an example so oxygen has a volume of 22.4 okay or you can take any volume but we'll, we'll keep that 22.4 as a volume um, that is the volume of oxygen and mass is going to be 32 all right and now if you take for the same volume you take the density so that's the volume is always going to be same divided by uh, 2 so essentially it's a it's a ratio of their molar masses all right because the volume is always going to get cancelled up all right and so that's why vapor density if you think about it it's actually for gases if the volumes are same then molar mass of any gas over molar mass of hydrogen and that's why it actually always works for gas it doesn't work for liquids and solid but for gases that's the formula all right it's a very simple formula very intuitive and uh, uh, you kind of get an amazing result from it so it became very easy to calculate the molar or at least the approximate molar masses of gases uh, using vapor density formula all you had to do is uh, calculate the density all right you can't actually know the molar masses uh, so in olden days so let's say you want to you have an unknown gas okay you have an unknown gas and the vapor density when you when you calculate the vapor density of that gas so it is a unknown gas okay um, x gas let's call it x gas all right uh you you want to know what this gas is obviously and this is let's say 1800 you don't know uh you don't have a, a, you know uh, spectroscopic techniques so how would you uh, determine anything about this gas well one of the ways to do a classical chemistry with it but still you still need to find the molecular mass or atomic mass of the gas right so uh what you do is and you you find out that it's a very unreactive gas it doesn't react very um very neatly with uh, some of the gases so that means it could either be nitrogen or it could either be um one of the noble gases right how do you narrow it down uh one of the ways would be to uh, one of the way would be to um know the molar masses all right and then from that you can by process of elimination you can work out uh, what this gas is say is it is it already existing gas or is it a new gas and you can uh, narrow it down all right so what you do is you take a specific volume of this gas specific volume okay let's call this v1 at stp at standard temperature and pressure all right you take a specific volume and then you wait okay similarly you do the same for hydrogen all right and as now if you're doing this for um, you know if you're probably doing this uh, on a regular basis you already know what the uh, volume of the hydrogen gas what the mass of the hydrogen gas for the specific volume is going to be all right so you do this for hydrogen gas and you use a uh, v of h2 v of uh, v of h2 okay volume of hydrogen gas at stp at the same conditions you want to do um, and then w weight of hydrogen gas all right and so you find that out uh, so this is going to give you oops, sorry this is going to give you density one and this is going to give you density 2 right and now you just do find out the vapor density rho 1 by rho 2 and then once you know the vapor density you can simply double it and what you what you get is so let's say the vapor density is um, is 14 all right vapor density is 14 so what do you think the gas is well the gas is going to be nitrogen gas all right 
because molecular weight of the gas is two times vapor density okay and so that's why it is going to be a nitrogen gas so if you know that um, that nitrogen gas is actually and so uh, intuitively you can figure this out that if you take n2 gas has a molecular mass of 28 and hydrogen gas has a molecular mass of uh, 2 all right so if you if you look at the density ratio of these two um, nitrogen is 14 times heavier than hydrogen and that's why this formula will always work all right at least approximately we'll get the correct answer all right um, so think about uh, these formulas i mean it's, it's not a difficult formula to actually understand if you think about let's say take another example o2 o2 is 32 and hydrogen is 2 so you think about it uh, o2 is 16 times heavier heavier than hydrogen gas all right and so that's why molecular mass of o2 okay is going to be two times uh, two times its vapor density as compared to uh, as compared to or with respect to hydrogen isn't it so that's why this formulas will always work all right um so think about these formulas and try to uh, come up with your own logical reasoning for why these formulas are working. In fact, you can do that for any formulas, why the formulas actually work and that will actually help you understand the chemistry in a much better way. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.